Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. The big goal for this week is to make as much progress as I possibly can here in the head. In terms of fairing, I am basically done in here. I just need one last little fillet here on the inside corner in the shower. Two years ago, I gutted the interior of Athena to reinforce some structural members underneath the cabin sole. After that, I installed the new bulkheads and then recently I've started finishing the head, complete with a shower that has in-floor heating. And said shower pan marks the beginning of this week's DIY adventure. Right now, there's a void between the shower pan and the cabin sole. Now, I've been walking on this for a couple of days and even though it's just held in place by these fillets, it feels nice and sturdy but I would feel better knowing that it's supported from below. For that, I will use a foaming epoxy. This is the same resin I used back in 2018 when I built the new rudder, but the hardener is different. This hardener won't require post curing. I believe the mix ratio is one to one by volume or something like nine to 10 by weight. But once we mix these two, we only have a short working time. The instructions mentions four minutes of working time. I seem to recall it being a bit higher than that, but yeah, this is in no way like the polyurethane foams you see just kind of explode and expand really violently. This is a much slower and more controlled process. I have no easy way of knowing the volume of the void below the shower pan. So what I'll do is I'll drill a hole I'll pour a little bit of foam in there, then we'll wait 30 to 40 minutes, then the foam should have expanded as much as it's gonna expand. And then we'll see if we need to add a little bit more. The epoxy will be nowhere near cured after that amount of time. In fact, it'll take about seven days for this to fully cure, but that's not uncommon for epoxies because even though they might seem hard after, for instance, a day, for them to fully cure, it's often a multi-day process. Pouring a little bit of foam at a time might also be a good idea from a heat perspective. As with most other epoxies, this is gonna be an exothermic reaction, meaning it's gonna throw off heat. And if we have a lot of epoxy, it's gonna throw off a lot of heat. There's my little hole for pouring the epoxy and depending on how it flows and expands, we might have to drill a couple more holes, but uh, let's see how this goes. I mixed the resin and the hardener and poured a little bit of the first batch into a plastic lid. As you can see here, it took about 30 minutes for the foam to fully expand. Between the first and the second batch, I realized that I didn't have enough foam to fill the entire void. To take up some of the space, I shoved a bunch of leftover core material into the void. Then I just kept adding more and more foam while keeping an eye on the temperature. It only ever rose about five degrees Celsius above the surrounding temperature. And then finally, foam started coming out the top. And this is what the foam looks like next morning feels pretty solid. Before I can start laying up glass in the shower and also sealing all of the plywood in there, I do have to build a little shelf that's gonna be part of the cover of the holding tank or the poop tank as I like to refer to it. And I got a little bit of a head start last night. Right now, everything is just kind of wedged in place, but the front here is gonna be removable. It's gonna be attached to a bit of stainless steel angle iron so that in case we ever need to replace the poop tank or do massive changes to the plumbing, we can pull this out and have super good access. There are gonna be two smaller access holes in here for the top of the holding tank and also for the seacock down by the bottom. There's gonna be a stainless bar going across the top here so Ava can keep all of her soaps and shampoos and whatnot up here. The mixing thing for the shower is probably gonna go down here somewhere. And uh, yeah, the shelf here is gonna be a permanent part of the boat, but like I mentioned, this is gonna be removable. Let me just get this little shelf here glued in place, then we can start sealing everything in here. Before I got to lay up any glass, of course I had to prep the surface. Any little bumps or imperfections will make it harder or impossible to get a good result. I cut the first piece of 170 gram or eight ounce cloth and mixed up some epoxy. I started with the small shelf area. All wooden surfaces in the shower get one or two layers of cloth, except the areas around the port light. They just get three coats of epoxy. The biggest area was the shower wall. It was a little bit difficult to wrangle the giant piece of cloth, but in the end it went down smooth. The fiberglass adds a little bit of abrasion resistance. The epoxy on its own does a great job as a moisture barrier. I don't foresee much wear and tear around the port lights, which is why I didn't bother laying up glass. It is a very labor intensive process to lay up glass by hand. And once you've done it for a few hundred hours, the 
fun kind of wears off. I made sure to thoroughly seal the edges around the shower pan as well as the holes where I poured in the foaming epoxy. Then it was on to the throne area. It's the only area outside of the shower where I'm actually laying up glass. It may have looked like a quick and painless process on camera, but it took over eight hours to lay up all of the glass and get everything sealed. At least tomorrow when the epoxy is cured enough that I can sand it, there's only a few hours of sanding and maybe just a dab of fairing compound standing between me and primer. If you saw last week's video, you might recognize this thing. This is gonna turn into the watertight hatch between the shower and the technical compartment. Earlier this week, I got glass laid up on the back of it and I have also sealed the edges just like I did with the foam bulkheads last week. So yeah, this is basically ready for a bit of sanding and some paint. And let's not forget the holes for the latches. That is a perfect fit. I hereby proclaim the hatch ready for paint. I'm gonna paint this at the same time I'm painting the head to save a little bit on rollers, but uh, yeah. Good progress. Next morning, I sprang into action. Little did I know that I'd end up spending the entire day in an endless loop of sanding and fairing, sanding and fairing. Before I got too far into the sanding, I decided to cut the hole for the drain and also to dry fit the stainless steel angle that's gonna secure the poop tank cover. I also wanted to figure out the position of the hatch that'll allow access to the seacock without removing the cover. And then, like I said, it was an endless loop of sanding and fairing. Dusty, sweaty, noisy work. What's not to like? Things are not perfect in here, but I have reached the much sought after intersection between wanting a good result and not being able to stand another second of fairing. So yeah, I guess we're done fairing. The pursuit for perfection is a wonderful addiction, but Ava shows up in 22 days as of right now, and I would like the head and the forward cabin to be done. At least all of the major and dusty stuff. All that's standing between me and being able to prime the head is just to sand the last little few areas I fared last night. So yay for more sanding. I have no doubt that after applying the first coat of primer, I'm gonna find more little imperfections that I wanna fix in here. That always seems to be the case, but uh, for now, let's just get the last bit of sanding out of the way. After the copious amounts of sanding, I used a little bit of alcohol to wipe down the surfaces to get rid of the dust. And now we are finally, finally ready for primer. It kind of felt like it would never happen. To paint the shower and the head, I'm gonna use the same process I've used on all the other visible surfaces inside of the boat. It's all Interlux or international products. The primer is this one, Interprime 820. And then for the paint in the head and the shower, I'm gonna use some of this undercoat. The reason I'm using this undercoat stuff is because, well, I've got a bunch of it left over from last summer when I painted the top sides. This is the primer that's used underneath Perfection Pro. I also used undercoat as a paint here in the galley and that seemed to have worked out very well. It is a little bit more glossy than the interior finish. Interior finish is also an Interlux or international product. It's the paint I used here on this bulkhead. It's a little bit more of a satin finish, which I really like. But like I said, I've got a bunch of this stuff left over and I don't want it to go to waste. But for now, let's just worry about the primer. This is just the first coat of primer, so of course it doesn't look super spiffy, but still, just seeing everything be nice and white is a big improvement. I'm going to get out of these fumes because the nose hairs are curling. I'm gonna seek refuge up at the workshop. 
I hope to get my Itty Bitty Perkins DIY gen set fired up on Sunday. In preparation of that, I flushed the coolant and poured in two liters of distilled vinegar to clean the freshwater side of the cooling system. I'll leave the vinegar there to do its magic over the next two days. Then it was on to the dinghy arch. Earlier today, I got a fresh shipment of glorious sanding and polishing belts. It took about four hours, but I managed to finish the dinghy arch and also get started on the pulpit. In case it's not completely obvious, polishing is pretty dirty work. Definitely do not wear your best clothing. But uh, yeah, let me go ahead and grab a shower and then we can take a look at the first coat of primer. I should probably chuck these in the laundry too, but uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Overall, things are looking pretty good in here, but pinholes are a right pain in the behind. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. There's one down here, a couple up there, some right here. I absolutely hate working with the 407 fairing filler. I always get little pinholes and it's, it's just really annoying, but fortunately the cure is pretty straightforward. I just have to go over all of the surfaces in here and wherever I find little pinholes, I gotta fill those with a little bit of polyester putty. As you can tell by my wonderfully clean pants, it is now the next day. And it's time to sand that little bit of polyester putty from yesterday. As you can see, there ended up being quite a few little areas. For this round of sanding, I'll use 120 grit, but for the final sanding in between the last coat of primer and the first coat of paint, I'll use 320 grit. But for now, 120 grit is nice and fast. In my eagerness to apply the first coat of primer yesterday, I completely forgot about the hatch. I've just given the front of it a light sanding and it does look like there are some places where I just want to apply a little bit of polyester putty. The head is ready. The hatch is finally ready. Let's go ahead and get that second coat of primer applied. I didn't bother setting up a time lapse because it's white primer going on a white surface. It doesn't look very visually pleasing. But yeah, things are starting to look pretty good in here. I did find a couple more pinholes in here. I'll have to fix those. And of course, there's no trim in here, so it all just looks very white on white. But yeah, things are moving along. I have yet again sought refuge at the workshop. Now, just as I was walking in, Martin was finishing spraying some of their stuff, so I'm a little bit limited in what I can do up here. I don't want to risk contaminating the surface on their newly sprayed stuff, so... Yeah, but uh, there's still some minor stuff I can take care of. While we're here, Athena's new solar panels showed up yesterday. These are four 305 watt panels. Unfortunately, one of them got a little dinged up during shipping. To be completely honest, I don't know if I should make a big deal out of this because it's just a scratch here on the frame. There's no visible damage to the rest of the panel, or at least not the part of it I can see. So. Yeah. Solar panels are pretty fragile, but I don't know if this is a big deal. And I feel like I've got bigger fish to fry. Like for instance, the whole high output alternator situation is still not sorted out. And that's kind of starting to bother me a little bit. And I, I don't want more loose ends flapping about. So maybe I should just accept the fact that they've got a little scratch. Along with the solar panels, these four MPPT chargers also showed up. Four, one for each solar panel might be a little bit over the top, but it does mean that we have a bit of redundancy. And also if one panel is shaded, it will not in any way affect the other three panels. I'm still waiting for the aluminum track that's gonna allow us to actually mount four of those huge solar panels on Athena. But uh, last I heard, they should still show up in about a week. So uh, fingers crossed. I took care of some smaller stuff, like for instance, enlarging the holes in these doohickeys that are going to go on the stainless steel end cap so it will be easier to fit. But then I realized, wait a minute, I've got Athena's new life raft and its cradle sitting right here. Figuring out where to install this guy and getting the holes drilled and filled is mainly going to be an outdoor activity. So even though the boat is reeking from the primer, I can still go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Light as a Freaking feather. Conveniently, the life raft comes with instructions outside of the canister so you can actually power through this before you need the thing. That seems like a good choice. But uh, yeah, I've read through this and I haven't found anything in regards to 
best practices for mounting the life raft. Unfortunately, I don't really have a lot of options when it comes to mounting locations for the life raft. There's basically only one option and that's right here. For a brief second, I considered mounting it up here immediately forward of the mast, but that won't work because this is where the dinghy is gonna sit when we're on passage. I also considered mounting the life raft on the arch, on the outside of the arch, but I don't think that's gonna work because the life raft would end up protruding out pretty far beyond the side of the hull, meaning it would get caught on stuff. And yeah, I just don't think that's a good idea. When I painted Athena, I found some holes in the transom here that looked like there at some point might have been a life raft mounted down here, but that's very close to the water. Which brings us back to the starboard side of the cabin tub. You can't even go on the port side because there are lines led off to the cockpit over there. So yeah, the starboard side is the only real option. The good news is that mounting the cradle is gonna be very straightforward. It's just four bolts. The only thing I need to be aware of is the fact that I don't wanna drill into the two laminated beams that are right here. That's the guy here and this one over here, but as you can see, they're conveniently located right around this hatch, so it should be fairly easy to avoid them. So there's a beam over here, and there's another one over here. So I can either place this here or here. I am leaning towards the forward option. So this is roughly centered. Let's go ahead and drill some holes. Of course, first I need to remove the headliner. It wouldn't be a boat project if it was just straight forward. It's time to cross our fingers. All right, so it looks like I could have gone a few centimeters further aft, but better safe than sorry. The core in the cabin top here is balsa, and typically where you want to clamp something down, you're going to have to remove the balsa and inlay a little bit of plywood or something else. Now in this case, the cradle feet are so small that I think I'm just going to drill an oversized hole from below and fill that with thickened epoxy with a little bit of chopped fiberglass mixed in. Something the size of maybe this guy. He is bigger than the feet on the cradle. Check out this piece of balsa core, completely dry, absolutely pristine. And I've got a nice squeaky clean hole here for the thickened epoxy. Once the thickened epoxy with chopped fiberglass is in there, the balsa core is not gonna get compressed when I tighten down the bolts to secure the cradle. I've got the option of removing a little bit more insulation and laying up glass on the inside. I don't think that's necessary. I think I'm just gonna use a giant washer in there that's gonna be way bigger than the hole that should be perfectly fine. To make sure this is not gonna start leaking, I'm gonna sand away a little bit of the Kiwi grip. These are the chopped fiberglass strands I'm adding. It's a lot easier to buy a bag like this than trying to cut this yourself. As you can see, there's quite a lot of glass in here. So now it's just a matter of adding 406 until it's not a droopy mess anymore. This should do nicely, but I'm gonna wet out the holes first so that I know that this is gonna get a good bond to the surfaces. I have applied a little bit of tape up on deck just to make absolutely sure I don't end up with a bunch of it Poxy stuck up there. After having smoothed over the holes, I've now got a pretty neat looking surface in there. These should be ready for me to mount the cradle tomorrow, so that's a little bit exciting. But uh, yeah, it's time for me to apply another coat of primer, and I'm gonna do that off camera. Early next morning, I went to drill the holes to the thickened epoxy, but it must have been cold during the night because, yeah, the drill came out looking kind of yucky. I accidentally mixed up way too much thickened epoxy yesterday. This is the stuff that was left inside of the boat and that has fully cured. So yeah, I know it's not a mix ratio issue, it's just a temperature issue. I believe the epoxy I'm using cures down to 10 degrees Celsius and we might've been kind of skirting that overnight. I don't think we went under that, but uh, yeah, it just means that I need to wait a little bit longer for the epoxy to cure, which is a shame because I was hoping to end this video by installing the life raft. But yeah, that's gonna have to wait until next week. And speaking of next week, I should be able to get the last coat of primer applied today, first coat of paint Monday, second Tuesday, third and final Wednesday, which means Thursday I'll be ready to start plumbing in the heads, get the little vanity finished, stuff like that. Also next week, I wanna finish assembling the freezer area in the forward cabin. 
I've kind of been putting that off because I haven't really figured out how I want to do that yet. I want the freezer to be removable in case we ever need to replace it, but I also want it to look nice. So it's a little bit of a tricky area, but I do want the forward cabin to be as done as I possibly can have it before Ava shows up. So I guess I'm kind of out of time. And on that very fitting note, I'll end this week's video here. I hope to see all you guys back here aboard Athena for yet more DIY fun next week. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.